Hey guys, it's Misty and Samantha here with Pack Project. And to start off, I just want to read this little definition. Isolation is a pivotal tactic that controlling partners use in order to weaken their victims, preventing them from hearing others' perspectives and to bring them into line with their own belief and requirements. Now, isolation of a victim from the outside world is an important element of psychological control. Isolation includes controlling a person's social activity, whom they see, whom they talk to, where they go, and other methods to limit their access to others. Relatable? Yes, definitely. I remember when I first realized that I was being isolated was when I was invited to be maid of honor at my best friend's wedding. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't go at first. I couldn't talk to her about the details and stuff. And then I just couldn't go at all. And I want to say that's when I had first really realized it. What did that do to your friendship? That it hasn't recovered fully since. So that definitely had severed some ties. Yeah, I definitely have had some lost friendships and business contacts um, because of being isolated and the tactics that they use to do that. Absolutely. I remember, uh, and I didn't realize that this was isolation at the time, but he, my abuser used to break my phones all the time. I went through so many phones in a year's time and it wasn't until I had gotten out and I realized that that was a form of isolation, but cutting all communication. Wow. I've never thought about that. Never. I, um, definitely, I was on the phone one time with my mother, my phone got broke. Um, I, I, went to my own apartment though and had a phone in my mailbox different story different time um yeah so it talks about it being psychological did you have any circumstances where it felt like the isolation was psychological i did my as you know my family lives in another state. I don't have any family in Virginia immediately around me anyway. And um, I didn't realize until later, until I learned more about it, um, that he was using the fact that my family was, you know, states away from me, um to to isolate me from them and even though he could not isolate me physically he was isolating me emotionally and mentally making me feel that you know if they cared anything about me that they would come and see me um the fact that you know he'd be like they don't even call you like which is not true but you don't talk to people on the phone every single day. Um, but he, he definitely used that um, to isolate me from my family. But again, not physically, but emotionally. Um, I actually found this website called therapycts.com. And they actually put on there some warning signs about isolation. Um, there's about six of them. One of them, the, the first one is that your partner insists on as much one-on-one -on -one time as possible. Now, I think that this is, this is huge even for younger adults and maybe even teenagers. You know, in the beginning when you are with somebody, you want to spend um, a lot of time with each other. You know, and I think it's important for people not to lose themselves and what they like in that. Um... But to be aware that if they insist on one-on-one -on -one time, that that might be a warning sign. Yeah. The next one is your partner refuses to interact with your friends and your family. I can relate to that one. I've 
There are so many family functions I couldn't be allowed to go to. Um, whenever I went to go visit my family, um, he would constantly be calling me, trying to break up the time that I did spend with them so that it was focused on him. It, it was just a constant... But he didn't want to go. But he didn't want to go. And if I was able to drag him to go, it was a fight the whole way. It, it wasn't very pleasant with him around. Um, so right here on the same website, therapycts.com, it says this tactic um, also reinforces the abuser's emotional manipulation and gaslighting as they deflect the blame for worsening relationships onto your family slash friends. Or they deflect, sorry. Did I say deflect? Well, so when you start losing that tie from your family and friends because you can't see them, they deflect it. They didn't have anything to do with it. Oh. Nothing. No. Right? Um, the third one is your partner invents reasons why you should not see family and friends. So when... I was on maternity leave with my oldest. I um, I was by the house. I was at the house by myself, and my mother, who worked close to where I live, would come on her lunch break and uh, spend time with me. We would walk up and down the street for a little bit, and that continued throughout my maternity. And that was a a way that she was not going to let me be isolated because she knew that I wasn't going to be leaving but she also recognized that I was lonely and that I didn't have my outlet which was work at the time to occupy me and that's dangerous yeah I um now did you have a car at the time I did but I would not always be able to use it. He would hide my keys or um, take them, stuff like that. And Or even if I did have them, I still wasn't allowed to go because I'd get in trouble when I got back. Wow. So he... But it was your car. It wasn't y'all's car together. It was my car. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um... The next one is your partner uses jealousy, guilt, or other emotional manipulations. So I, um, uh, when I read that, I, um, remember this one time that, um, I was given 15 minutes to go from Fairfax. I was on 66. Um, but to go from Fairfax to Alexandria in um, midday traffic, 66 is, was packed um, during this time. And um, it's definitely not, even with no traffic, it's not a 15 minute drive. You know, 66, 95, 395 in the neighborhood. It was, it was just longer than 15 minutes. But I was given 15 minutes um, to... Prove my love to him by getting there in 15 minutes. No regard for my safety or concern for 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 my well-being driving. It was, if you love me, you'll be here in 15 minutes. I can relate to that too. A lot of this is so relatable. I was told to make a list of 10 things I loved about him and 10 things I hated about him. And the they all had to be different. Nothing could be the same. So the ones that I wrote for the hate, I those were held against me. And the ones that I wrote that I loved about him, it wasn't enough. It wasn't specific. So I had to write 50 things. And I couldn't finish the list. Wow. Just to prove that you love them. Well, how about this one? Your partner insists on knowing all your passwords. Yeah. That's, I think that's a big one too. 
Yeah. They have to have access to all your information, know who you're texting, talking to, all of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, and these are just a a couple. I think there's probably a lot more, um, you know, warning signs that we could sit here and hash out. But these are, these are, I felt like a lot of the basic ones, um, sometimes it's so basic you don't, you don't really think about, um, it being something that's negative. And, and the article even said that it's so subtle, um, it's kind of hard to, to be detectable. So you have to be vigilant. And so that's why we just wanted to, you know, talk about some of the things that we had been through with the manipulation and isolation and being isolated and, you know, warning signs to look at if you or anyone you know are in a situation, uh, we hope this helps. And I'm going to put the link to the website that Misty was talking from in the description box below. And thank you guys so much. And see like, you. share, comment, pass it along. Bye. Bye.